Well, good afternoon and welcome to Ministry Spotlight. You know, as we travel around the country and, and uh, we'd like to highlight some of the places where we are. And uh, we're taking this opportunity this afternoon to introduce you to our good friend, Pastor Brent Biller, and the folks here at Grace Bible Fellowship in Ridgely, West Virginia. And uh, so we just want to take this time to look at a couple slides uh, of the uh, ministry that uh, we have and go through that. Of course, you see there Grace Bible Fellowship, Brent, Pastor Brent Biller. And Brent is going to come and just share a little bit about the church and uh, its history uh, as we're here this afternoon. But uh, there's the church on the outside, and, and it looks a little different, and it is a little different. And Brent will share that with us about the uh, church and how they are here, how they got here. But there's just a couple church uh, pictures there. And then I want to just give you the address, because I'd really invite you to come. If you're in the Ridgely, West Virginia area, Cumberland, Maryland area, uh, we'd invite you to come and uh, check it out. Uh, I'm sure that you would receive a very warm, friendly welcome. And uh, I know that you appreciate the church, and I know you appreciate uh, Brent and his uh, teaching ministry that he has here. So there's a little bit of, there's the address. It's 17 Hunt Club Plaza. Ridgely, West Virginia. Now that's just on route, uh, West Virginia Route 28 South coming out of Cumberland. Uh, and so that is there. If you'd like some more information, there's a phone number there on your screen that you can call. Where is it? There it is, 304-726-4063. And also they have a website at www.gbfwv. Dot com, And so we'd encourage you to uh, stop by, check it out, give them a call. They'd love to see you. So let's uh, go to our interview here and just introduce you to uh, Brent and uh, the folks here. Uh, Brent has been here for, oh. I'll cover that in You'll our You'll cover interview. that in just a moment. <laughs> All right. So Brent, why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, and uh, what you have here in the church. Thanks, Joe. My wife and I, Sandra, have been a long time health care providers, and we both worked in the hospital for over 40 years. She was an operating room nurse who then became a first assistant. She worked for several orthopedic surgeons. I was a nurse anesthetist, and I provide I provided anesthesia for many, many different kind of surgical cases, and many times we worked together, day in and day out. She would help the surgeon, matter of fact, do all of the closing procedures on the, the operations, and I provided the anesthesia for it. So many, many times we went to work together and worked all day together and came home and then got ready for Sunday and had church. So we had a very, very... Um, interesting life before ministry, but it complemented that which then came with our ministry. I was also an advanced cardiac life support instructor just about the whole time I was in healthcare, and I really enjoyed teaching. I think I developed my love of teaching uh, doing ACLS because that was learning and teaching very critical skills in life-threatening situations. And of course in the hospital uh, that happens fairly frequently. In 1996 we received the grace message and I've often said it was the second most important thing in my life after, uh, after the Lord saved me. So we got the grace message and we began then having home Bible studies. And I think then that interest in teaching transferred from health care into a ministry. And I still to this day, I love teaching. I love teaching the spiritual things of the Bible, especially the Bible rightly divided. And it still is the great passion of my life. 
So from 96 to 2000, we continue to have uh, Bible studies in various homes. And then on Easter Sunday in the year 2000, we made a commitment to become an organized uh, uh, church, and I became its first pastor. We continue to meet in homes for the next couple years as we grew in number, and eventually then in 2002, we look for a place more public in order to then have our church. One day I was coming to the credit union, which was actually part of this plaza, and I noticed a sign in the window next door, uh, rental space available. I thought, boy, that would be so convenient. So we actually rented a space in this small plaza in Ridgely, West Virginia, and we started having church there. That was in 2002. In 2003, we continued to grow and, and prosper, and we decided to make the decision, a small group of uh, three couples that were members of the church, and also the church itself, decided to purchase the building. And we did, and we have been here ever since uh, that time. And that's why the pictures of the church exactly. that we showed you are a little different because the church is in a plaza. It is. And it is today. And it's been, a, it's been very productive. We have rented spaces out beside the church. We have tried to be good stewards to those who rent space from us and provide a good place for them to conduct their business. And it's been a blessing all the way around and I would advise others thinking about looking for a public venue to consider because there are many, many little plazas all over this country that are not being utilized and it's worked well for us and I think it could work well for you. So you came here one day to go to the credit union I did. not knowing that one day you and I would be sitting Isn't amazing? in that credit union where it was the credit exactly. union is now a main part of the church. And let me just add to that, in the rear of this room, which was the credit union, there is the safe. The safe that the credit union used to put all their valuables in. And when we renovated this as a chapel for our church, we decided to leave that safe. Because at one time, it was to hold a precious deposit. Well, now this building and this room in particular holds a different kind of precious deposit. Amen. We teach uh, the Bible rightly divided. We know the precious deposit that the Lord has given uh, believers during this dispensation of grace, and we take that very seriously, and it's just been a wonderful, wonderful uh, time spent here. Amen. Amen. So that was in 2003, the same year we heard of this evangelist named Liam Mokey. And we wanted to do everything we could to, to promote our church, and we thought it would be a great idea to have a vacation Bible school. So we invited Lee and Darlene, and they came, and we had a great vacation Bible school. You may not believe this, but we're a, very, we're a small facility and not much area. The first year of our vacation Bible school, we had 70 kids in our small space. We were crammed from wall to wall, but it was a wonderful start on a ministry that we would do uh, for the next 18 years. And of course, then Joe and Susan took over for Lee and Darlene. Uh, we never missed a beat. Uh, they followed up and came every year, and we're continuing that wonderful tradition of providing uh, a very, very well-organized, uh, doctrinally sound vacation Bible school to children in this area. It has been the most fruitful ministry for us. Uh, we go all in from year to year. We, from the very beginning, saw the importance of evangelism and especially child evangelism. If we don't get these kids saved before they uh, become teenagers, uh, likely uh, they will uh, not be saved or the, certainly the percentages go down after that. 
So it's the biggest event we do from year to year, and we're so glad that we started this uh, relationship with Bible Doctrines that continues to this very day. Let me just interject here and, and brag on Brent a little bit. Uh, I've been coming here since 2004, and with the, with the evangelism reaching children, uh, I, I just said to Brent last night, because we're here right now doing the Bible school again this year, but I said to Brent last night, of all the churches that we go to, Brent is the only pastor who really takes an interest in the area of evangelizing children. The only pastor that takes an interest in, in evangelizing pastor, er, children, and, and Brent will year in and year out look forward to that time of doing one-on-one. -on -one. Um, if, if I've missed another pastor, I apologize. Uh, but Brent has really headed that up. And, and just as a side note, that emphasis on evangelism and emphasis on children, reaching children, has, has taken Brent into homes that otherwise Absolutely. you probably would never would have gotten into. Absolutely. But beyond that, you have, you have received <coughs> members coming Absolutely. to the church sure. as a result of the Bible school each year. So it, it has just for Susan and I to sit back over these last 16, 17, 18 years to watch this church progress as it has because it has a heart for the truth and a heart for evangelism and doesn't, it's not ashamed of that. And we, we uh, so much appreciate coming here, coming here. So after each vacation Bible school, we of course do a try to do the best we can at uh, registering kids and we get all the vital statistics and phone numbers and addresses and the first thing I do after we're done, whatever day of the week that is, I sit down and either make phone calls or most likely write letters to the parents of those children. Uh, we try to seek especially the unchurched who parents have brought children to Vacation Bible School, but we encourage them to follow up. Uh, they need to be in Sunday school after they make, especially after they make a decision for Christ. Even our small church, no bigger than we are, we have had now into the hundreds of children accept Christ during that week of Vacation Bible School. It's just the most important thing we do, and we continue to look for it year in and year out. Mm -hmm. So, uh, then in 2007, we began another ministry, a small group of men from the church uh, got an open door to start a ministry to a prison ministry to the Federal Correction Institution in Cumberland, Maryland, just a short distance from here. And we had a thriving ministry there. We uh, had a Bible study on a weekly basis and uh, always tried to evangelize the inmates that were receptive in doing so. It was extremely popular. Uh, we had many tell us, of course, there are many other denominations that go into the prisons, but we were told more than once that they learned more of the Bible through our Bible study than, than the others, and we just give God the credit for that. But unfortunately, we did that for 13 or 14 years up until uh, March of 2020 when COVID shut us out and we've been shut out of that prison uh, since then. But uh, it was unfortunate, but we had a great run. We were very proud of that ministry as well. In uh, several, several times throughout those years, we had Bible conferences. We had one in 2015 and Joe and uh, Pastor Paul Sadler spoke at that one. We had a great conference. And we're also planning one this coming October in the Cumberland area. It's actually LaVale, Maryland. And uh, Joe will be speaking and myself and Kevin Sadler will join us for that. So we invite any who are in this area and uh, uh, to come and participate in that. We think it's going to be a, 
a, an interesting conference. I asked them to do a little bit of a history on the Grace Movement, of where we came from and where we've been and where we're going and how we're doing. So we invite you to come to that. I think you'll find it very different, maybe, and very enlightening. And that will be at the Holiday Inn Express. Express in LaVale. In LaVale, Maryland. Which is a suburb of Cumberland. So it's it's right it's right in the area. And here. it's only a few miles. We're right across the river from Maryland, so it's not far from our church. Right. So that's what we're planning for the fall. Of course, we've been, my wife and I have been so blessed to have gone on some overseas trips to the lands of the Bible. Joe and Susan have joined us for several of those trips. And we're thinking about maybe after the pandemic's over into organizing another one. Maybe looking to see the sites of the Protestant Reformation in Germany and Austria and Switzerland. So. We might be thinking about that in the year 2022. So when we make some uh, plans, we'll be sure and let Joel know and he can advertise for us. And we hope that you will join us uh, for that as well. Yes, yes. So, and, and, and getting back, um, in, in, in Susan and I, in our travels with the, in our summer itinerary ministry, especially with the vacation Bible schools, uh, Brent and Sandra have, on numerous occasions, uh, met us where we were and conducted the evangelism in that VBS as we were doing what we normally do. Brent and Sandra came and, and did the evangelism there as well. So not only did they have a heart for the young people here, but they have a heart for the young people other places as well. And uh, we have always appreciated uh, that uh, partnership that we've enjoyed over the years. And uh, hopefully we'll continue to do that uh, as we continue on uh, before we get too, too elderly in our, in our lives. Well, that's getting here faster than faster we want to think about, we, isn't we it? Want, uh, but yeah. we really have enjoyed that. We've gone to... Uh, different parts of the country we probably wouldn't have visited. Uh, we've met uh, people in other Grace Churches and sometimes non-Grace Churches. We go wherever we're asked to go and we've always enjoyed it. Uh, once, once a pastor learns the importance of that one-on-one -on -one evangelism to kids, I think that's what God put us there here to do aside from taking care of our flock and we've always considered a real pleasure to be able to do so. Yes, and we've always appreciated it. So, well, I, I wanted to take this time uh, to just uh, let you know, first of all, here we are in Ridgely, West Virginia. Uh, actually, we are finishing up our vacation Bible school, our family Bible school today, tonight, and uh, we'll be packed up and heading out yet tonight. Uh, so. But I wanted to just take up time and, and introduce you to Grace Bible Fellowship and Pastor Brent Biller. And again, I would encourage you, if you're in the Cumberland, Maryland area, even just traveling through on a, on a weekend, uh, stop by. Church begins at? Sunday school at 9.30 and church at 10.30. At 10.30. And um, usually you're done by 11.30 unless you get yes. a long-winded preaching. Yeah, well... Uh, that only happens once or twice a year. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> We're not saying who that might be. But uh, if you're ever in the area, we would encourage you to stop, stop in and visit. And, and I'd encourage you to pray for this church. Put, put this Amen. assembly on your daily prayer list and, and pray for what God is doing here. Uh, again, there's the conference that Brent mentioned, October 8, 9, and 10, uh, right here in the Cumberland, Maryland area. And uh, the phone number for that is there, um, and uh, we lost that. But the phone number is, give them the phone number. 304-726-4063. Yes. It will be at the Holiday Inn Express in LaVale, Maryland, but you need to make your reservations through that phone number. That will be Brent. We, we have a block of rooms, and you will get it at a greatly discounted rate. So make sure you contact me to make your room reservation instead of calling the hotel, 
because you'll get it at a reduced rate. Yes. So we'd encourage you to do that. So, well, thank you for watching this ministry spotlight. And uh, I trust that you will have a blessed day um, and that you will pray for Grace Bible Fellowship. Thank Amen. you, everybody. God thank bless you. you. Thank you. Bye-bye.